Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Benigno S. Aquino III. Good morning. Welcome, Mr. President, to the International Rice Research Institute, and thank you for accepting our invitation. We are very pleased that you decided to visit ERI during the Philippine National Year of Rice. We have uh, a number of major roles. Uh, we house the world's largest collection of uh, genetic resources on rice, which we will visit later. We do basic and applied rice science, about 50 to 60 percent is uh, related to crop improvements, so the breeding of new rice varieties, and the other half uh, roughly is uh, all aspects of crop management, grain quality mechanization, post-harvest technologies, environment, climate change, social sciences and information. As it comes to the hills of our economy's amazing achievements in 2012, particularly the agricultural sector. Last year, the harvest are uh, over 18 million metric tons of palai and over 7 million metric tons of corn are the highest levels we have ever attained. Uh, palai productions growth from 6% in 2011 to 8% in 2012. It is the highest rate of growth since the year 2000. These were primarily achieved through policy shifts. First, from input subsidies to investment in strategic agri-fishery infrastructure, and secondly, from rice import dependence to local procurement and food staple sufficiency. With our renewed uh, cooperation with IRI on various areas of rice research, and with the continued support of our dear president, we and the Department of Agriculture look forward to achieving even more, uh, more rice yields to the point of self-sufficiency in the food staple by the end of 2030. Climate change is a major challenge, temperature, rainfall, flooding, and weather hazards. And as Akim said, we need climate-proof rice. So here comes the food staples sufficiency program led by Secretary Alcala. And in this, we have started the collaboration, continuing the collaboration that has started over the last 40, 50 years. First is uh, President Marcos was our country's ruler. We had a program called Pasagan in 99, and the aim was 100 cabans per hectare. Uh, we never achieved it, because today it's 80. Four tons translates to 80 cabans. We never achieved 99. So it's still a goal after 40 years. Then the other aspect, because when we were in, um, when I was in PBSP, there was a um, there was a question, not to take away anything from the research that has been done and the achievements that the has, been, has done, but they were asking uh, farmers who have adopted the methods at that point in time, we're talking about the early 80s, uh, wound up with uh, planting systems that required tremendous inputs that the end result was the net income of the farmer uh, did not actually increase. Uh, and there was a there was the talk. Uh, various informed suggestions that perhaps the traditional methods that were less input intensive would redound to greater profitability for the farmers. May I just ask if uh, there is also research being done as to how to meld uh, perhaps uh, the two conflicting viewpoints? Yeah, I think the, the input costs are a big concern for any farmer in the world. And the issue is not uh, less inputs. The issue uh, is uh, higher input efficiency, essentially. Uh, the, when we look at rice in particular, for example, and take nitrogen fertilizer, which is one of the expensive inputs, the average efficiency in a, that a farmer currently achieves is uh, 30 to 40 percent. Uh, so the rest is lost. You know. We know that uh, with good management practices, you can already increase this efficiency to 50 percent, if not 60 percent. You know which means you can get the same yield with less fertilizer or more yield with the same amount of fertilizer. Yeah. 
uh, the problem has been that, uh, and it, you can make the same calculation for other things like uh, water and the pumping cost along, uh, and many other things. Uh, it, it is really a matter of uh, being able to implement those things in not just a few research plots or a hundred demonstration plots. It's basically how do you bring this to a million farmers? Yeah. And, and there, some countries have made more progress than others. And it's, uh, there needs to be uh, a, a good extension system, but there needs to be also uh, an incentive for farmers to do that. You know, if it's not worth it, you know, if the gain is too small, you know, then uh, the incentive is not there. Yeah. But this is where the, the gaps are in terms of uh, uh, profitability. So through more efficient use of inputs, actually save production costs where possible, but also in particular increase the yield. Uh, because increasing yield typically has much higher influence on your profit than saving a little bit of the input costs. Uh, so, but coming back to the uh, Masagana 99 challenge, uh, I think the 100 k ones is an absolutely realistic goal for this country uh, on average. Because we know that for many trials, and we also know that many good farmers achieve those kind of yields and even more. Yeah. So climatically, in terms of the soils, in terms of the available resources, it is possible, I think. Uh, the 99 is, of course, the average across irrigated and non-irrigated, across other growing environments, across uh, types of varieties, across different ways of taking care of the plant. So indeed, uh, the challenge of meeting the 99 started in the Marcos days with about 40, 45. And now, um, many farmers far exceed that, of course. <laughs>